All right, cool. So I am all set. I just wanted to get my Facebook stream going first. And um, today's rocking your lead gen using KW command. So essentially what I'll be working in today is uh, mostly campaigns. So you'll see a few different ways you can do uh, lead gen using the campaign tool or applet rather in command. Um, so before I get started with that, um, I do want to just quickly go through my settings again. So I like to just go through my settings and making sure I have all the appropriate connections already set up. So in this case, um, because we're going to be doing some uh, Facebook advertising, I definitely want to make sure I have my Facebook connected. Um, you do need to have a business profile as well. So if you haven't created one, uh, you definitely want to make sure you have one of those set up. Now there is two different types of settings in here. There is post scheduling and there's also ad manager. So both of those kind of do two different things and connecting one or the other is, is gonna essentially make one work and not the other. So post scheduling is mostly for just doing your social posts. So me just making a, uh, a quick post about uh, the market or um, kind of like quick tips around the house or whatever. Um, you can actually manage those posts in command without having to go to Facebook to make them. And those will be like your free posts if you wanna call them that. Uh, then we also have my ad manager, which is gonna manage my Facebook advertising. So when I'm putting together things like my social posts uh, or my, uh, my sponsored posts rather, those are gonna be managed by the ad manager. And we're going to go into that in a little bit just to show you how that works. Um, you can also connect Twitter and you can also um, use that with AdWords too. So if you're familiar with Twitter ad manager or if you use Google AdWords before, you can also connect those in here for uh, additional advertising. Um, other things that we have available is command email. So that's something that you can use to manage your uh, your email campaigns and command. And that is free up to 5,000 emails per month. Um, I know some agents who are actually doing a lot more than that. So they do have uh, pricing tiers as well. You can pay, I think it's $10 a month for up to 10,000. And then the tier above that, I believe is $20 and that gives you 20,000. But there's quite a few different tiers. If you plan on sending out a lot of emails, um, you can use that tool as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to my home screen. And like I mentioned, we're gonna be working mostly with campaigns today. So if I click in the campaigns, the first thing that you're gonna see here is my dashboard. So they introduced this dashboard probably like a few months ago. And the dashboard's just a nice way for me to see an overview of um, campaign performance. So in this case, I have the uh, amount of spend I've done. We can even just do this year to date, um, ooh, which is past 12 months. There we go. So you can actually see here like the performance of all the ads that I've ran. I can also see how many leads I've generated, the amount of campaigns I have, and the amount of engagement. So this is a great way to just get an overview of how well my campaigns are performing now, if you have your um, goals set in command, you'll also be able to see, um, based on the amount of leads that you need to generate for your goals, it will actually let you know how on target you are. So in this case, I have uh, 105 leads to go, 105,000 leads to go. I'm uh, quite off track from that, but it's only the start of 2021. We got a ways to go. Um, now, you'll also notice here, I went into settings before, but you can also do it here as well. You can connect your accounts. So I do have mine connected for both my social posts and paid ads. Now, you'll notice that it only has one while this has two. So interestingly enough, if you're doing a social post, you do have to connect each page separately. However, if you're doing a paid advertisement, you only connect your one account and that's your personal profile. And then that will pull in any of the pages that you manage. And you can also do that here as well if I wanna connect more. So pretty much similar to the screen we were just in. So if you prefer to do it here, you can also do that. 
Um, you'll notice that I also have my top performing campaigns, which is also here, and it shows you um, which campaign I ran recently that I was doing really well. And um, in this case, uh, this one was updated from last week. So if I do the past 30 days or I do the past 12 months, you can see that it will uh, update this accordingly. So this was one of my best and it lets you know how many, uh, how much each lead costs. So it was about 81 cents. And that campaign in particular generated 37 leads. So again, it's a great way to kind of get an idea of like what was working well, uh, how should I make my other campaigns in that case. So let's go down again. I mentioned the social posts, and this is where you can then generate content on the fly, just to post to your page. And these are your free posts. And there's quite a few. They have nice graphics as well. And I can just say I want to use this one. And I can say I want to post this onto my business profile. And we can also view it here. If we preview it. And that looks pretty nice. I can then go ahead and just schedule that post and then we are all set to go. All right, so let's get started. So basically on the top here, it's gonna be outlined by paid ads, emails, direct mail, and then social post. I'm gonna be focused mostly on the paid ads. I wanna just quickly touch in the direct mail as well. Um, because you are able to send out postcards through command and you could use that as a tool to do circle prospecting. And I find that to be something quite useful because you can just generate a list, have it sent out, and then you're all set. So let's go into um, where it says create a new campaign. And if you click on that, you'll notice that I can then select from a list of different options. And I'm gonna be working with social ad right now. So if we click on social ad, and we'll just call this um, 123 Main Street in Fort Lee, and we'll say ad. Now you do have a list of goals and the goals are gonna be essentially what, what is the objective for this particular ad? Am I trying to advertise a listing? Am I trying to attract sellers? And in this case, attract listings. Um, maybe I'm looking to have somebody join my team or perhaps I'm just doing uh, event awareness. So there's quite a few different objectives that you can choose from. I believe the one that's kind of the most commonly used is attract buyers. And each one has its own little description as well. As you can see, find buyers who are looking for agents and I can select that and we can select the channels as well. In this case, I do want to run that to Facebook. And I also want to, you know, if, if I wanted to run to Instagram, I can also do that. All right, so let's go and set up our campaign. And <clears throat> this is the view as we enter in the campaign. Um, sorry, somebody just opened the door. Um, <clears throat> This is the list view, and this is basically my editor here I can see. So if we go under here, I'm gonna go and hit add new listing. And what I can do from here is I can do a search for a listing pretty much anywhere in the country. Um, I'll just use this one because off the top of my head, I remember it quite well. So we're gonna use this one, or maybe it was 74. Um, all right, we're, we're, it's okay. We're going to use 75 Green Street. So I'm just going to use one of these as an example. We'll do this one here. And we're going to select it. And again, I can go through and, and essentially search for any listing that I want. And I think something that's commonly confused with Facebook advertising as well is that you need to have a listing to do an ad. You don't necessarily need a listing to do an ad, even if you're just circle prospecting. Um, there's quite a few graphics that you can pull from designs that do have, you know, it could just be neighborhood stats. It could just be um, what's happening in the area. So you don't necessarily have to run it for a listing, but again, you do have the ability to choose from basically any, uh, any listing in the MLS currently. 
So the advantage of also pulling in a listing from the MLS is that it does generate some of the copy for you. And I'm not going to use all of it. So I'm just going to take out some of this. I want to keep this as concise as possible. I don't want to have too much text going on. It's going to kind of hinder the reach of my ad. So less wordy, the better. You'll notice here it even says uh, 125 characters or less. So we're going to cut this down even further. Um, Let's cut this off here. Actually, we're going to keep some of that. We'll just call this put unique. And I'll just put here for the headline, we'll put unique, unique condo available and for Actually, let's let's make this a little bit better. We're just going to put boutique. We'll just put something like own a piece of history in Fort Green. I'll put want to. Cool. So we're prompting a question. We're making it a little bit more enticing on the on the eyes. So let's just move this out. I'm actually going to just put trying to make this as less wordy as possible. Okay. Cool. All right. I think that's fine. We're going to leave that the way it is, and I'll just put click learn more details. And we'll have a nice little emoji there as well, just to kind of prompt the eye there. All right, something like that. So we have now, as you see what I'm doing, I have my main copy. And that's going to appear on the top. So on the right hand side is going to be the preview of the ad itself. So it gives me a little idea what it's going to look like as I'm doing this. And I just want to edit this a little bit as well, make this all capital. So it looks a little bit more professional. Cool. Looks good. All right, awesome. So that's all set. So then description text. So just as a quick heads up as well, when you're working with description text, the customer or potential lead is not going to see this because when you're running a lead ad, the lead ad is going to actually hide this link. So you don't want your customer to see the link before they click into anything. So that's why this particular information is going to be hidden from them, basically. But I'll just put something on here anyway. Click Learn More. More details and images. Oops, can't spell today either. All right, awesome. And we'll just put a little quotes around that. There we go. We'll save add text. So as I'm doing this, you'll notice that the layout is basically I have my name and goal, which we selected. We selected the listing. We have our add text or add copy completed. And we can always come back to this. We can always come back and edit that whenever we want. Then we get down to add media, which is going to be basically the images. And I'll select a few of these just as an example. And this is quite a nice place. So I'm going to nice images here. Also very helpful, definitely. All right, so we'll just pop in some of those images. I think that's fine. I'll use one of the kitchen as well. Actually, we have one of the kitchen. Um, we'll use one of these nice bedroom shots. All right, there we go. That looks good. All right, and just as another quick heads up here, the slideshow or the carousel, you can add up to five images at a time. You can also drag and drop them if you wanna rearrange where they appear. And you can view the preview of it on the right hand side so you see what it looks like. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with that right now. I think it looks good. Again, you can always 
do this however you want. I'm just giving you some suggestions on how I think this would be effective. So this looks great. Um, you can also add in video and just with video in general, I would make sure it's a, a, a quick video. You don't want to have something very long where it's going to be too distracting or you might lose the attention of your uh, potential lead. So if you're doing any video clips, probably try to keep it under 60 seconds. Um, even 30 seconds would be fine. Um, that's just going to be based around, you know, the attention span of a of a average person, you know, three seconds or less. <laughs> um, we're gonna save ad media now. I think I'm good with that. So as again, as I'm moving forward, all these little check boxes will appear and let me know that it's completed. Now the bulk of setting up the ad is gonna be done under here where it says Facebook ad. So if I click on that, you're gonna notice that I have a account here, which is my name. And this confuses agents quite often. And I explain it this way. Think of it as it connecting, it's, it's looking through my personal page to see which other uh, business profiles I manage. So I have quite a few here that I manage and you're probably gonna have maybe one or two depending on how you are uh, working with Facebook but I have quite a few and I wanna just select the one that I want this particular ad to run to. So I'll select the city views one. Again, yours is gonna probably be your business profile. Now, when I select the page, you'll notice that right here where it says destination, there's two options available. There's one that says Facebook lead gen form and there's also one that says use a site or landing page. I find this error quite often, or I do see this error a lot, not too, not too much anymore, but I, do, I, I was seeing it. If you select use site or landing page, what's gonna happen is it's gonna configure the ad to be more for reach. So you're looking to get as many impressions or as many eyes on that ad as possible, but not necessarily getting people to sign up to uh, find out more information or capture as a lead. So by doing it this way, you're gonna be losing out on that lead gen. So that's why you wanna select here where it says use Facebook lead gen form. In this case, mine is already defaulted to that. So that's why it's already selected. If you notice that yours is selected as use a site or landing page, you can just easily click on here. It might have you um, agree to in terms of a service but once you agree to that terms of service, basically you'll have this selected and you can go ahead and now create a Facebook lead gen ad. Now there's a couple other things that we need to do before we can set up the ad and that's gonna be a call to action label, which in this case we do have here, it's all good. We do have a follow-up destination URL as well. So what's the follow-up destination URL? <clears throat> That's going to be anything that I want to lead that customer to after they click through my ad. So your customer clicks through your ad or the, the lead clicks through the ad, they submit their information, it goes into your command, then where are they going to go? So what's going to happen is once they submit their information, they're going to be brought to a follow up destination URL and you do need to have one. It's the only way it's going to work. So I can say, I wanna lead them to maybe a website. It can be my website. It could be a landing page for that property. It can be a link back to my consumer app. It can be a virtual tour. Um, it could be even things like a video clip maybe, but it needs to be there. So I'm actually gonna go to my agent site and I'm gonna search for this property address. And we're just gonna go ahead and go to uh, my website here. And I'm gonna search for that listing. And uh, let's see if I can find it. Here we go. So I'm just pulling up the listing on my website. So think of this as, as almost like its own landing page as well, but it's connected with my uh, agent site. So if a person is led here, all my information is gonna be on the branding. So like if I scroll down, it has my info here. Uh, my info here as well. The lead capture form has my information. Um, so if I scroll back up, the link for that property site is right here. 
And I'm going to use that for my uh, follow up destination URL. So even if they navigate away from this page, let's say they go back to my home screen, they're still on my website and they can then continue to do their listing searches here. So, oh, they can even look at feature listings like, wow, that's cool. And agent pick, there we go. So they can still continue on looking through my website if they choose to. And yes, I am looking at this $14,000 rental. Anyway, <laughs> back at it. Let's go back to our ad here. We're gonna copy in the link. So that link, you'll notice that it has that little checkbox there. It just means that it's approved. Just a valid link, that's all it's saying. So you'll see after viewers submit the Facebook lead form, you can direct them to a website or landing page. So in addition to be able to kind of manually do this, there is a landing page here that we can also select from. So this is just basically every landing page that I would have created in my um, kind of command at any point. The top few links though are gonna be my agent site and my consumer app. So those two always live on the top. Cool, all right, so step three, and this is gonna be the one that will be probably the most important is choosing my ad targeting. So you'll notice right now we have a radius search of 20 miles in Brooklyn, New York. Now, if I wanted to switch that to a custom setting and I wanna switch where I'm targeting that ad to, we can easily do that by deleting that. And then we can say, maybe we're looking to target somebody coming in from uh, maybe uh, we'll do Fort Lee, New Jersey. And around Fort Lee, New Jersey, we wanna target that 20 mile radius. So that's about average. I would say that's probably what Facebook would recommend in regards to the targeting. You'll also notice there's also an option for targeting your database. And I typically don't suggest doing that unless you have a large database with quite a few valid emails for Facebook, because it's gonna look for those Facebook emails and it's gonna place that ad in front of those people, but it's only really beneficial if you have the correct email on file that's also associated with their Facebook page. Um, I think what's gonna wind up happening in the future, there's gonna be some uh, retargeting. And I think that's an option that I've been getting a lot of questions about from agents in regards to, I ran this Facebook ad and I captured these leads, but how can I retarget uh, those groups of people later on? So there is going to be a retargeting option as, as I'm aware of uh, coming soon. I just don't know when, um, but I think that's an option that's going to be a, a game changer in here. So look out for that. I'm sure we'll have some update on that soon, hopefully. So the last thing here, and don't get too intimidated by where it says expert targeting. It's not really expert targeting. You're just choosing interests. So we're gonna select some interests from a list and I'll type in a few of them. So what is what is a interest? So basically it's saying, well, I know this person may be interested in Zillow. So I wanna target somebody who is potentially on Facebook, maybe looking at something on Zillow, or maybe they are following the realtor.com page, or perhaps you know they're also looking at like apartments.com, whatever. In this case, if this was a condo, so I'm just gonna go ahead and then we'll put in some additional information here. Um, commuting, that's another big one. And then maybe luxury properties. So I'm, I'm just using a handful of interests here just to give you an example. Um, we'll also do mortgage loans. Cool. So I can kind of keep going through here and they do have a cheat sheet as well. So if you click on this little interest button, this gives you a list of all the different types of interests you can choose from in Facebook. You know, I'll just do business as well. Let's go ahead and select a few of these. So if you're uh, stumped on like which ones to choose from, you can always go through this list. I wonder if they have like historic. Let's see, nah. All good. 
home insurance. Let's just do that one as well. We'll do save selection. So that's going to save those interests in my list. So when I'm doing the targeting, it's going to kind of like hone in a little bit better than just having no interest at all. I mean, you could leave it with no interest, but then that's going to be quite a big bubble to like work with. So you want to make that bubble just a little bit smaller. And that's what those interests do. So if we go ahead and save this ad now, the last thing we need to do is choose our duration and budget. So by default, it always does 10 days with a $30 budget. I can increase this. I can also decrease it, but you want to make sure that your budget is at least a dollar. So it will try to like spend as much as it can. Like as you can see, it's going to do 10 cents a day, but it's not a lot and it's not going to be effective either. However, if you're just going to be doing it for one day, let's say I'm only going to be doing it for one day. Ooh, I think I broke it. There we go. Um, if we're going to only be doing it for one day and we spend $1, it's just going to spend that dollar on that one day. But let's go ahead and we'll put $50 in and we're going to spend it over the course of 15 days. So that's a little bit more modest, as you can see. Um, and it's going to spend up to $3.33 per day. And it will never go over that $50. And if it doesn't spend the $50, if it spends maybe like $45 as an example, you do get credited back that $5 and then you can put it towards uh, a new ad in the future. So once we're completed, all we need to do now is we go up to where it says publish campaign. We can also save it as a draft if we want to come back to it at any point. But if we hit publish, it's going to ask me for a payment method, which on file I do have a card right now. And if I hit create campaign, that's going to start up the process for the ad. And there's a couple different steps involved. There's about a delay of a day where it's doing like a in review. So you do it typically will go pending, which means it's going to review the ad. And the benefit of doing it through command, because um, I didn't explain this earlier, um, doing it through command, you're kind of like not having to jump through hurdles like you would through like Facebook ad manager directly. So you don't have to worry about going through all the compliance checks because KW is going to just do it for you. So as soon as you get the ad set up, you don't have to worry about making it a special ad and you don't have to worry about having the interest set up a certain way. Um, this is going to kind of like take that work out of it for you and then command will just take care of the rest. Um, another question I get often is if there's any sort of discount running it through command versus Facebook. Um, there isn't. It's essentially like using Facebook through command. You're running the ad and it's all going into Facebook. It's not going to, you know, nothing's being pocketed by KW. All that ad budget's going directly to Facebook. But there is no sort of discount or anything. Um, at least not right now. I'm sure they'll run specials. But um, yeah, keep an eye out for those as well. Um, all right, so basically that's how I would run a Facebook ad through command. Now, that's just one way you can run an ad. There's quite a few ways you can do it, whether it be an ad for prospecting or if I'm looking to find sellers or perhaps I just wanna alert the area of you know, what's going on, perhaps an event or whatever. Um, so there's quite a few ways you can run ads through command. This was just one example. Um, let's save this as a draft. Now I just real quickly want to show where you can access some of those graphics that I was talking about. So if I click on this red KW button and I click into where it says designs, And if I click on the little blue plus button on the bottom, we're gonna go ahead and hit social and I'm gonna click next. And once this loads, we're gonna be greeted with a template library. And you'll notice here that I do have a section particularly called lead gen. And you'll notice I can do home value and there are graphics here as well. You also have um, holiday greetings, 
website stuff, client love. So there's quite a few different types of um, themes, I suppose you can call it. And I see something in chat. So Fatima is saying, how about if my website doesn't have any listings? Um, can I still do a campaign with a generic listing? Yes, you could. So the, the nice thing about those KW websites is that you do have access to pretty much every listing on there. And you can always reach out to an agent too and say, is it all right if I use your listing for some of my marketing? Um, I'm pretty sure they're not gonna say no. You know, free marketing for them uh, is probably not that not that bad. So, um, but just getting back into um, the the section here where I was under designs, um, there's quite a few different designs that I can choose from. Now, if I wanted to do something like a neighborhood update, as you can see here, I can pull in our local expert. You know, these are also really cool. These are also graphics that your market center can send to you. So uh, speak with your MCA, we can get these numbers. If you needed numbers about particular areas, um, we can get those to you. Um, so if you ever need something like that, here are the graphics and you just pop in the numbers. But I wanna show you under neighborhood stats or snaps rather, let's go ahead and we'll just select one of these here. So I'm loading in a graphic here for a market update, and we're just gonna go and update some of the text real quick. So this is Barton Hills, which we're not in right now. I'll just do Fort Lee. You can do it for any town. Let's do, uh, we'll do one that's, we'll do like Englewood, right? Hey, Englewood, what's going on, Englewood? So your market's on the move. This text is already good to go. I don't need to really switch that up unless I want to. Um, I'm gonna load in some of the, ooh, I'm gonna load in a logo here. So I'm just gonna drag one in. And I'm just gonna resize that a little bit. Now here, you're probably like, well, how do I edit that? Because this isn't obviously Englewood. So what I need to do is if I go to KWLS, I can search snapshots and I can also search by postal code. And off the top of my head, I don't know Englewood zip code, so I will search for it. Uh, 07631. 07631. And that's gonna load in a snapshot for that particular town. So once this loads, it might take a second. There we go. Let's go ahead and pop this in. And we're just gonna roll it right over. There we go. The only thing I wish it would do is uh, change this to say the town name that could be coming in a, a future update. But you see what I did. Basically, I just typed in the zip code. I drag and dropped it over the existing graphic and that's basically good to go. So I can go ahead now and download this if I wanted. So we're gonna download it. And just as a heads up as well, I do have this being recorded. So I will post this later today on YouTube and I'll show that in a second. Let's click done now. Now I did download this graphic. However, if we go back in the campaigns, we're gonna pretend like we're doing a whole new campaign just for this one particular example. So what I wanna do now, we'll do social ad again. We're gonna do, um, let's just do Englewood neighborhood ad. And we're gonna do attract listings. So now what we're doing is we're going to be prospecting in Anglewood. And we're going to do setup campaign. And now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use this. So don't worry about that. So suggested text, as you can see, we can actually shuffle between some of this. Let's go ahead, um, do this. 
I think that's fine. I like that. And we'll just kind of go to your homework. And let me tell you about your neighborhood housing market today. So that's funny. We just made a graphic about that. So let's go ahead and go back down to where it says add media. And you can see here, you can select media for this campaign and we can go ahead and hit add image. Now, one cool thing is I can choose to either upload that design from my computer or I can actually select it from my design library. So I don't even have to re-upload it. Downloading is also useful though, because you can have it posted to your Instagram. So it's always good to have a copy of it. Um, selected design was not ready to use. Okay, well, in any case, I did download it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that in. We'll hit preview. And we do need to change the crop of this. As you can see right now, it's listed as wide. I wanna change that to square. And we'll hit save. And then what we're gonna do now is hit save add media. And we can also preview this ad as we can see. It's looking good so far. Now what I can do is if I hit configure, we're just doing the same exact process over again. And we're gonna choose here. I'm gonna actually, in this case, I'm going to have download my app. So I'm going to have them download my app. And from here, what we can do is we can use our custom settings to prospect around Anglewood. So I'm just going to type in Anglewood. There we go. Now I'm going to add a few interests again. We'll just do Zillow. We're going to just do kind of like the same thing we just did. Uh, Realtor. And then uh, I'll also do, let's just do like investing as well. We'll just, we'll add a few of those in here. Ooh, that's spelt wrong. Creative real estate investing. So we're just kind of selecting a few of these as an example, I'm gonna hit save. And then the process again, I just go to my duration and budget. I choose the duration and budget I wanna use. And then what we can do from here is hit publish campaign and we have now created a prospecting ad. So you can see here, it's quite versatile in what you can do. And you don't necessarily need a listing, like I said. We just did this all with a simple graphic we created on designs. All right, let's save this as a draft. All right, so the one last thing that I wanna show real quickly is how you can use command to send out a direct mailing piece. So if we go to direct mail, um, we didn't have to do it like that, but we're gonna do it here, create new campaign. We're gonna do direct mail. And we're just gonna call this test one six 2020. We'll just do uh, advertise or attract listings. Now there's two different options available. You could use a default template, or you can upload your own. So there is some sizing requirements there. Now, if you're working in designs, they do have the templates you can work with. But let's say I just wanna get something created real quickly. I'll do default template. And we're gonna go ahead and we'll select the listing. And I'm just going ahead and selecting one of these listings. Just do just listed, whatever. There we go. And we can also select the template we wanna use. So in this case, I can do a four by six. We have a six by nine, six by 11. I'll use that. And there's also another six by 11 here as well. Um, I like this one better. I'm going to use this one. So we do have the, um, the copy here and I'm just going to kind of take out some of it. We don't need all this there. It's quite a lot. All right, let's delete that. Save. Cool. That looks good. Now what I can also do is I could 
edit the market center. Put in the street address as well. 502 Fort Lee, New Jersey. 07024. And we're going to verify that and we'll hit confirm. Um, let's also add the market center logo in there. I'm going to pop that in there. There we go. Save it. Okay. Um, then we need to add a listing image. So in this case, I'm just going to choose one of these. And it's going to tell me that it's low res. So it, it does need to be a high resolution image, as you can see. Um, at least 300 DPI is the uh, preferred quality. So I might just have to do a high res home image. Just as an example here, we're going to select a large. And uh, let's see if this is big enough. Yeah, it should be okay. All right. Let's upload and replace. So one thing to consider as well, um, when you're working with a professional photographer, they typically do give you the high resolution images. So in any case, you'd just be replacing it with one of those images. Save that, that looks good. Now you can also preview the card as I'm moving along. So looks good so far. You can also look at the back. Not too bad. Now, what I need to do now is just select my information. I'm just going to pop in my info here. So let's just say like this is hypothetically my listing. Okay, all good. And uh, let's see, listing details. Cool, it's all set. Now all I need to do is on the uh, bottom here. Let's preview the card again. Okay, looks good. Cool. Um, I'm actually going to use, no, we're going to use that one. That's all good. Um, now you can also add a QR code, which I found to be pretty cool. And the QR code can be left to a, uh, let's just do download my app. And I can also preview that here as well. So there's the QR code. And we're just going to go ahead and hit step two. I'll go ahead and hit create. OK, awesome. So now what it's going to allow me to do is do my circle prospecting around the area. So here you'll notice that it's selecting homes within that area. So I have 200 cards selected. If I did 500, it's going to adjust that accordingly. So there's one thing you're going to notice here. If I scroll down a little bit, oops. If you notice that there's some bubbles with numbers on them, that's actually a building. So it's actually able to target buildings now. So in this case, it's targeting a 28 unit building. And I've, I've tried these before with other areas like if I was doing somewhere around the Gold Coast. It does target those buildings, which is really cool. Um, it wasn't doing that previously. So this is definitely something that's uh, more or less new ish. It's probably newer in the last couple months or so. Or maybe even more than that, maybe three months. Um, but in any case, that's it's a nice touch that you can do that. Um, you can also send a copy to myself. And it does give you a price as well. Now I can also select from standard and first class. Um, one question that I get often too is if it will allow you to download a list after you do this. You can't. It won't let you download a list, unfortunately. Um, but it does give you some information if you hover over like the address. It lets you know just a little bit of what's going on. So let's go ahead and hit next. And it's going to generate that preview, as you can see. So I'm giving that a second to load. 
All right, cool. So you'll notice here that I can also view a preview of the proof. So this is basically like a finalized version of the card. And here I can see the front, here's the back, looks very nice, very clean. And basically from here, what I'll be able to do, I'll uh, scroll up and we're gonna just X out of this. From here, I can then go ahead and just preview the, uh, or well, I already previewed the card, sorry. Um, we can also see you know, what happens next. If you order these before 3 p.m., it does send it out same day, which is pretty cool. And you can also view here the postage cost. And right now it's free because I'm doing over a certain amount. And if I hit make payment, that's gonna set it up and then we'd be good to go. So that was just another way that you can actually do your lead gen through command using a tool like direct mail. And we also went over some of the social ads. So you have an idea of how those work as well. Um, so I am starting to wrap up here. I just want to quickly go to the YouTube channel because this is where I'm going to post that video later. And uh, we got a new subscriber. Go to my channel. We have 407 subscribers now. That's awesome. I, I, I knew we were going to go over 400. So I called it. Um, but if anybody who hasn't already subscribed and is in this uh, in this call, please go ahead and give that a subscribe. Um, the, the videos that I do and uh, any of the other staff do, we do post them here and you can find them at any point on demand. So like, for example, I did my DocuSign class the other day, it's over here. And then Hal has some of his stuff as well. So these are all available on our YouTube channel. And um, we do have playlists available as well. So if you're looking for a specific topic, we do have those labeled in some of the playlists. Um, did anybody have any questions as I start to kind of uh, finish up here? Um, I have a quick question for you because I've had a lot of um, agents reach out and ask how they can increase their lead generation through command. Yeah. So it seems like the options are only for a fee, like, pay, like paid ads and the direct mailer. So is that really the way to go in order to lead gen through command. There's really no- I would say probably the it. most like straightforward way, definitely. Okay. Um, they do have email campaigns as well that they can set up, but that would also require them to have like some sort of uh, database in there for lead okay. gen. So there's, yeah, you could also do email campaigns, but like the main two, which are paid ads and direct mail, those are the ones you would be kind of spending some sort of money on, but you're, you'll definitely be generating leads doing paid ads that way. Okay. All right. Just good to know that to inform yeah. everyone else. Thank you. For sure. Um, any other questions? All right. Awesome. So uh, just to thank everybody again for hopping on this call. I've been getting, get, I've been getting a pretty good amount of attendance again, which is great. Um, but again, this will be posted on YouTube later. You can always find that. And um, it's also on Facebook. So any other questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me and um, hope everybody enjoys the rest of their Wednesday. It's finally nice out again. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Chris. Bye.